if, if I had a video on uh, Creative, uh, Creative Commons license and uh, somebody took it and put it up on YouTube, now that person isn't making money, but YouTube are by having it on their server. Would YouTube be uh, in violation of the copyright? It's questionable whether YouTube is even responsible for anything. You know, because even companies that have copyrighted stuff have tried to sue them yeah. and, and, and not necessarily succeeded. But the second yeah. question is, can someone take your work and put it up on, put it up on YouTube? The, the truth of the fact is, even though Creative Commons, and the reason it's under jurisdiction is, when you get a license, there's three different licenses that you actually get. You get the technical license, you get the layman's license, which is for us to understand, and then you get the legal jargon, and the legal jargon has to be localized. Um, Right. The truth is, none of it's been tested. That, that's what I'm getting at. Oh, it actually not, hasn't not been true. tested. Like, Nobody's right. ever been sued right. for, for being wrong, for, for violating a CC license. And part of that is because the whole CC culture is, if, they, if you break it and someone asks you, I prefer not to do it, immediately they stop and, and there's never had to be a lawsuit. Right. Eventually it's going to be tested, right. but it has not reached a court of law yet. So we don't know how they'll hold out. It's just, just interesting because like it's kind of a um, certain amount of plagiarism can be accepted as kind of common practice within like uh, fine art mm -hmm. terms. Like uh, I was at a, um, a, a lecture of business arts we did uh, recently on copyright law and they had like solicitors mm -hmm. like from an Irish point of view talking about like uh, what your rights are and they were just kind of like outrightly you know, do not like take your or kind of even reference images so that like are just that legally. <coughs> just like, yeah. Use, like. yeah, but like I, I was kind of thinking in a, a way that like you know, if somebody came along and um, I don't know, did a piece referencing an Andy Warhol piece, and like in the same way, yeah, do Sean for Danny do the mustaches on it, you know, that's kind of common practice within fine art to mm -hmm. kind of you know. You can get away with it, but sort of self-reference in yeah, art but, history. But the, the, these lawyers were like really kind of like uh, yeah. Well, they do have they do have a vested interest in the mm. whole area. I mean, they yeah. would surely you know argue that you can't do that. You have to remember that it's all new. I mean, Paul's yeah. boutique, Beastie Boys. It wasn't that long ago that it was perfectly fine yeah. to yeah. chop up movies and sounds and plop it on an album and sell it and make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we can change this, and I think yeah. that's the kind of the point behind Creative yeah. Commons, is that copyright law is obtuse and ridiculous, yeah. and there needs to be a middle ground. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that recourse to lawyers happens when there's someone who's the, you know, self-lex of an offended party, mm -hmm. and the lawyer spends time representing them. So I think it was from that perspective that the lawyer was saying, in my experience from defending a person who's complaining about a breach of copyright, in a way, CC steps outside that because the <coughs> the, per the party to be injured is already elected to distribute the stuff. It's a very good yeah. control. Yes. But, but in the whole copyright thing, when someone does want to be harassed about it, let's say yeah. the Joyce estate, uh, or, or say the Warhol Foundation, mm. who have taken all the Warhol videos down off of YouTube mm. recently, and they're getting really kind of tight on distribution of, of anything to do with Warhol. Yeah. Uh, they can make things very difficult. You mean now you can't uh, you can't uh, quote from Joyce anywhere. He went out of you know Ulysses went out of copyright, came back in when they changed the law two years later. And, so uh, there's still the issue of fair use, but I don't think I don't think in Ireland fair use is protected. Well Stephen Joyce has been stamped out fair use. There is no fair use of Joyce. I mean the only David Narris has an exemption because he has a one man show based on uh, Finnegan's Lake and other things, but he made it, he created it uh, during that period when when Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake and things came off copyright. Mm -hmm. And it, it, he then now owns the copyright to that because they went back into copyright. So he has copyright this performance of it. So he's the only one who's allowed to do these things without mm -hmm. the say-so of Stephen Joyce, and he doesn't give anyone the say-so. We're not pirates, we're privateers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is an alternative to like mass media culture, but that's where you most want to play, is yeah. that other territory that is, I mean, maybe it's it's actually like, maybe it's it's just, it's so tempting, or maybe well, it's well, something to do with the I'd say if there's something you want to do, just do it. No, I, I agree, you know? that's what I tell my students. I say, I, I tell my students, you know, forget it, forget it. You know? 
If, it's some, if it's something you really I want to do, so. just do it. Yeah, because you I mean, at the end of the day, like, you'd be asked to withdraw it if it's a, if it's a, yeah, you know, know, the and, first and, and that's really it. You know, I mean, yeah. there's no great. Shit Unless you're making a lot of money, that that's the only way they can get you. If you're making money, because the two ways that you can really be sued, you can you can be told to withdraw if you're breaking copyright. But the only ways you could be sued, and remember, it's a private issue. You can't be thrown in jail for this. You can be sued for damages. Or if you're making money that they're not making, so they can get money from you because you, you should have been paying them uh, for mm -hmm. privileges to use it. Or if you're damaging their product to the point where they can't sell it, like if you make a porno using Teletubbies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. There's another, there's another case of Cambridge going in jail. There was a case of the Dimitri Skyderov case. You know, he, he figured out how to break the PDF, uh, how to hack into the PDF code, mm -hmm. and he got arrested by the FBI oh, wow. in, in, in Las Vegas and he was held, I mean I think there was eventually a big protest against Adobe by all their customers and then he, they, um, Adobe went along and begged the FBI to let him go. Wow, he, I didn't hear that. Okay, it's scratch what I said. <laughs> I mean they, they are actually pretty draconian. Um, it's called Makovic, the first version of the Dracula film mm -hmm. was, you know, so we're very lucky to have any copy of the Dosferatu because it was collected up by the by instructions of, uh, I was going to say Dracula's wife, but actually Bram Stoker's wife. And uh, <laughs> every copy was destroyed. A few copies survived. Mm. Which, okay, so. Well, even that works now. It mm. might depend on where you live in this place. Yeah. yeah. Um, Could I just throw one, one other yeah. possible problem? Yeah. Uh, as mentioned in the talk Alan referred to earlier on, um, there were uh, the higher officers of, it, of, of Irish cultural institutions at this talk as well, mm. um, who, who asked questions that made it obvious that they were nervous about mm. breach of copyright in artists' work in their facilities. Yeah. So, so, one, so another possible yeah. form of censorship of the, of the institution curator refusing uh, access to a particular artist but constantly using and, and I think it's, it's especially yeah. hard on, on the outskirts, which is where this is happening, you know, where someone like Kenny Sprites can go ahead and, and rip major Hollywood films. And ironically, like the MoMA's not scared, they, they bought the work. Documenta's not scared, they've got the money yeah. to back it up. Yeah. But when you've got fringe artists and experimental artists who are just starting out and want to speak back to that kind of culture, yeah. they're the ones w where the venues are going to be more frightened because they always go after the little guys. They're not going to, the big companies don't go after someone who can afford a real lawyer yeah. to back yeah. it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they'd, they'd, they'd rather use the guys they've got on retainer.